name's uh, Gary Graham from from Board Beer, and you know, as people know, we're we're food, drink, and horticulture. And today is very much the, the horticulture piece that we're we're looking at. Um, I know a lot of people would recognise me from working on the Bloom Show and from from Super Garden, which has been on TV most years. Unfortunately, this year we don't have a Bloom Show, but we do have some interesting plans for for things that will take place over that weekend. And we'll talk about that maybe in the weeks to come. Um, Super Garden, thankfully, is going ahead and all the filming on that was done uh, in recent weeks. So we will have that coming to our screens now uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Um, but today I'm wearing my Grow More hat, which is a great campaign um, put together by my colleagues in Bordea working with the horticultural industry, and um, particularly with, with the garden centres. Um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's got funding and energy behind it from a lot of people, a lot of expertise. And that's what's great about this campaign, because it means I get the opportunity to talk to fantastic people like Rachel Doyle and pick her brain and bring some of her great ideas and passion. And I really am thrilled that Rachel is the first person that we're having this conversation with. And we will have another five or six conversations in the weeks to come. But Rachel is what I would regard as a a luminary in, in the world of horticulture and garden centre business. She's, she's a very, very successful garden centre owner, founder, garden centres in Carlow, Lock and Bridge, and one in Wicklow as well, near Kilquaid, an online shop, all of the great things that we need to have going on at the moment. So delighted to have her on the line. Good morning, Gary. It's great to talk to you. I, I suppose I've never had so much time to be in my own garden, and I have to say I'm thoroughly enjoying it. The Arboretum is closed, except for our online and uh, I have my husband and myself, Frank, we've been banned out of it by our two sons, Fergal and Barry. We're supposed to be cocooning or whatever you call that. But uh, I'm enjoying every minute of the garden. And I suppose I really do believe that gardening is good for your health. It's good for your for your for spirit, mind and body, physically, mentally and spiritually. Gardening is really good for you. And, you know, gardening makes people happy and flowers. That's why we give people bunches of flowers, because they make people happy. And I think this the, the weather has been so good for everybody to get out in the garden. But there couldn't be a better be a better time to be stuck at home or, or stuck in your own, your own garden. Of course, we will have to remember not everyone is blessed with a garden. Some people might have a balcony or a windowsill or they might, they might be even look, look, looking at the neighbor's garden. But in terms of the time of year, you know, it's, it's you know, you and I, of course, are, are trained and we're both passionate about gardening. But finding that time and finding that time now, this really probably is the best time that you could possibly be stuck at home because everything is growing and starting off and there's lots that you can do, isn't there? Yeah, there's, there's so many things. And I, I always say it doesn't matter whether, if it's only a balcony garden, you, you can make it absolutely your heaven and your space. But I know you keep a lot of herbs very close to the back door, as you said there, that you bring into the house and you use on a regular basis. What would be your top two or three herbs that you would recommend to people? Uh, one, one that absolutely everybody should have is chives because you can go out with, with your scissors that's just for that job and cut chives if you're making this a sandwich or whatever. And that's fantastic. Uh, parsley, plain leafed and curly parsley. You use it all the time in everything. Uh, fennel, there's bronze fennel and green fennel. I I choose the bronze because I just like love the, the color and mm. it, it's 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 such an architectural plant. It grows up to about five foot high. It has very upright stems and this beautiful feathery foliage. Like I would never cook fish without going out and putting a bit of fennel, grabbing a bit of fennel and putting it in into the fish in whatever whether it's you know, something like that you're putting inside in it or like a big salmon or whatever. So uh, they they would be uh, uh, sage and thyme are two others that I think everybody should have at the back door. And I, I really, I have some down the garden, but the ones at the back door are the ones that get used. Because if you're cooking and it's raining, you're not going to get a coat and go down the back garden, but you go yeah. to the back door. The great thing about, about, about a basket or a container, of course, as, as you referenced earlier, you don't need a lot of space for that. It's, it's, it's quite easy to do. Tell, tell us a little bit more about, about, about the grandchildren and, and how, because there's a lot of people at home trying to figure out what to do, how to keep kids entertained. You can only spend so much time in the house doing the lessons or whatever, whatever needs to be done. And, and of course, I know 
there, there would be a, a cohort of people out there think, oh, gardening is very much for the older people and you, and you need to have this knowledge and expertise and you can't have kids playing in the garden because they're going to break the flowers or, or wreck the lawn or whatever. But they really are. A garden really is a fantastic space, isn't it, for kids and for learning. Uh, absolutely. And, and do you know, I, I, you know, with children, you don't promise something unless you're going to keep it. I had said to one of my little grandsons that I was going to plant a, budlia, a butterfly bush for him. And he was on to me until I got, I got the butterfly bush, <laughs> because that is the one that attracts all the butterflies and bees. And the mm. kids love this. They love to the feel that they're they're learning in school about nature and they love that, that, w- that w- they're able to come home and are able to, to show what they're learning in school mm. and uh, to, to get the kids involved in all of those actions. And even the, the, my grandchildren have planted potatoes now in pots. And, you know, it's really is putting a bit of soil in the bottom of the pot, then putting in about five potatoes in a 45 centimetre pot. Mm. And like, can you imagine in July, August, when these potatoes are, and, and they, they get out and count, count them. And the counting of the potatoes is a big thing. And it's, one, it's actually they, they realise the potatoes are good, are good for you and a good natural source of fibre. So you're, you're bringing in all the elements that is good for the knowledge and the health of the children. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a great way of get, getting them interested, isn't it? And getting them thinking about what they like to eat and so on, because they've, they've had that thrill of actually yeah. growing themselves. Yeah. I mean, like the potatoes, of course, you can do them in a bag, as you know, and you yeah. can raise that bag up in the same way, yeah. same way you would top up the stems in the field. You can bring absolutely, the bag up absolutely. and you can have that, that competition with the kids. You've, to, you've touched on something what I think is really interesting there, because as we know, there's a lot more interest in biodiversity and nature, climate change, you know, uh, activists like Greta Thunberg, a lot of kids are, and young people are watching and listening to that. But there's a lot of things we can do in the gardens and a lot of plants that we can bring in there that will help with biodiversity and pollinators. So you mentioned the likes of the budlia, the butterfly bush, which is which is fantastic, of course, you know, and, and of course it's a, it's a shrub and it's going to be a little bit later in the year before it's in flower. But there's lots of other good things you can bring in there as well. Is the one that comes to mind for me straight away when I think of Budlia, I also think of Verbena as a you know perennial or a biennial, a beautiful yeah. colour. Butterflies yeah. just warm to it. You probably have some favourites of your own, have you, that you would throw in there for people who are interested in that sort of thing? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, all of the actually all of the herbaceous, which is very much in fashion. Do you know mm. all of those that have loads of flowers on them will attract uh, attract the the butterflies and the bees? But I suppose in in the shrub line, I suppose. Daphne, uh, Jacqueline Postel, do you know, I mean, it, it's just gone out of flower now, but for fragrance, I mean, mm. it, it is just superb mm. and uh, very hard to um, to propagate, but really, really super. Cotone asters, the flower, a uh, lovely little white flower, and there's, there's from ground cover to big trees in the whole family. So that's a family of shrubs that are are amazing, this from deciduous to evergreen ones, with their flower, and then they produce berries, which is food for the birds in the winter. Mm. And thing like J.C. Van Tal, a holly, Ilex mm. J.C. Van Tal, brilliant mm. plant. It's, it's, it has male and female parts on it, so it will produce berries. And it, it is really gives you great cover for the birds in the winter. Something that we don't think of when it's raining, where are the birds? So we need to put in evergreens like that. Escalonia, another great plant. And again, from gold brine, which is golden, it's like a light in the garden. Nice. You know the way the old saying is, wake up and smell the roses. I have watched my wisteria come, come out every day. I watched the, the, uh, the tulips in bud coming in. And you know what? I just sit there in amazement and look at it and think how wonderful nature is. And what a wonderful world we live in. And that's what we have to do with to embrace it. And when this pandemic is gone, we will still have our gardens and we'll still have our plants. And that's where we can get solace. Enjoy. Yeah, Rachel, that, that, that's a powerful message, Rachel. And that's exactly why we wanted you to come on this call today. So thank you for that. I, we're, going, we're going to we'll close it up. We're going to do another one of these next uh, next week. We're going to have Corey Corkin, Rachel, who you and I both know from the west of Ireland with garden centres out in Mayo, Galway, Sligo. In the meantime, people can go to growmore.ie and we'll have as much information as we can get up there. And hopefully uh, people will use this opportunity to be able to do some good, good for themselves, their family, as, and as you said, Rachel, for the planet. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.